Welcome back, everyone. We're here live in Barcelona, Spain for theCUBE, SiliconANGLE and Mookie Bond's exclusive coverage of HP Discover 2013 in Europe. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined by two great guests here, Chris Thielen, VP of Marketing at Vertica, CUBE alumni. Welcome back, Chris. Great to have you back. Always a pleasure, John. Uh, a and Gabriel Di Piazza, the VP of Marketing for HP Autonomy. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me. Don't worry about the sound, they can't hear yes. it. It sounds like the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> People can't hear this little overhead um, speaker here. Um, guys, let's talk about uh, um, big data, application for digital marketing. So I'm going to start with uh, Chris. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a little pause here we can, so we can hear each other. We got a little loudspeaker <laughs> problem here. Um, be good to hear the question, it helps. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll give you an answer anyway. But okay, okay, can you read my, my okay, yes, so exactly. uh, Chris. Read my lips, right, so. Chris, give you, big data is changing the game in terms of applications. We're seeing that obviously with consumer marketing uh, and consumer applications, but the, the focus here is around value for, for customers. At the end of the day, revenue is always the conversation we hear. Cloud, better economics, um, consolidation of the data center, mm -hmm. get it better economics, yeah. big data great, asking new questions, finding answers, doing it in real time. At the end of the day, it's about revenue, increasing the top line value of customers. And one of the tactics is marketing. So uh, we're going to talk about digital marketing. So Chris, tell us a little bit about uh, the HP digital marketing vision Okay. And then we can get into some of the conversation. Well, I mean, anything that's about marketing is fundamentally going to get top management's attention in most organizations these days, right? And when you're talking about marketing, you're of course talking about growing the customer base and also making the customer base more satisfied and of course making them more inclined to buy your products and services. And you know, there's so much customer information and customer data out there these days. You know, it comes from our traditional enterprise CRM systems, which is, as you know, that's kind of my background, and, and, and you know, that's still growing, but all of these new forms of data now are growing just explosively, whether it's web data, social data, clickstream data, and just, you know, it all plays a role in us helping our organization, whatever organization we're in, whatever business we're in, even if we're not a business, you know, take a better, do a better job taking care of our customers, figuring out ways that we can build a stronger relationship with them, increasing the lifetime value, and when you can talk that talk, you know, then that's very much our vision, it's all about all about customer data and leveraging customer data and monetizing customer data, you know, that fundamentally, like I said, that, that gets upper management's attention and it, you yeah. know, regardless of what kind of economy you're in. Yeah, the humanization of big data is about also marketing, right? So we have Gabrielle here from, from Autonomy. Tell us also about your vision and then let's get into it because what we have here is a kind of a match between kind of the Haven demo live here in the Cube. We got big data, vertical storage and Jess making sense of the data manipulation uh, and then also making sense of the analytics of yeah. it and insights and reporting. So tell us your vision. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, but digital marketing also had a big evolution from you know, rule based and code based all the way to uh, machine learning these days as Chris just said. There's all sorts of data, uh, you know, click stream and so forth, but uh, you know, demographic data, psychographics data, social media, preference and so on. So the point is how do you actually help customers convert, not just the attraction and the engagement, but it's the actual conversion. One of the, one, you know, one of the data we always use is for, uh, typically by, for, for every $92 spent in customer acquisition, only $1 is spent on customer conversion. What we would like to do is to actually help our customers increase conversion rates, uh, which is fairly low uh, around the industry these days, and few percentage points can actually, uh, you know, are valued many, many millions of dollars. So what are we doing? We're basically applying uh, different techniques now that we are, you know, a part of HP together with Vertica as part of Autonomy. Uh, so big data technologies to analyze all sorts of different data and, uh, you know, apply basically sophisticated analytics to uh, derive customer behavior and start to anticipate what is basically the next best action to drive conversions. 
Chris, I remember uh, prior to you joining HP, we've had many conversations in the past about you know, Enterprise 2.0, we've talked mm -hmm. about you know, all this collaboration software, you know, and, you know, business software. You know, now we're at a point now where we're realizing it's all a, lot of, a lot of real value and real tangible products hitting the market with big data, using unstructured data, using structured data, all with kind of this querying engine. You guys are powering that with Vertica. I got to get your opinion on this. Um, as people start looking at marketing, okay, I want you to talk about the trend of personalization because at the end of the day, what's happening is some are calling it omni-channel marketing, multi-channel marketing, you know, infinity level marketing. You can go down, slice and dice down to this guy wears black shoes, you know, loafers, you mm -hmm. know, male, 34. I mean, the level of targeting is so it's fantastic to the point where the user experience of marketing uh, for customers is to basically get to the persona of one, where you mm -hmm. can actually know an individual. So please share with us your take on kind of that, that road that we're going down. One, do you agree with it? Two, what does it look like? And kind of where we come from yeah. and what inning are we in? How early is it? Is it just the tip of the iceberg? You know, share us your, your thoughts on that. Well, I, I think you're right, and it's funny. I was just in another conversation where somebody was saying, you know, these, these, a lot of these things become real when we stop talking about them. So you don't actually hear as much about personalization and one-to-one -one marketing, which were like 90s terms back then because they were new and cool. And now we really are at a point in time where there's no excuse for an organization not to be able to deliver to their customer on a very individualized basis. You know, but there's so many other things. You know, we just talked about all of the different forms of data and all of the different things customers are doing. You know, in the 90s they weren't tweeting and then in the 90s we didn't have the ability to track their activity on the web as closely as we could, although that was certainly part of personalization. But then the other thing is the time factor. I think what companies are realizing now and organizations are realizing now is that customer relationships aren't static. So we really need to look at them longitudinally and over a length of time and we really need to look at, you know, the present but also historically in the future. We need to be able to model. So it's, it's above and beyond. It's not just what has the customer done and what has the customer bought because, you know, those shoes I might have bought might have been a gift from my father for all they know, right? You really don't know these things. But you know, what, how has the relationship evolved over time? And you know, in a lot more sophisticated sense than that, how is it going to be able to evolve in the future? So you really need to be yeah. really, really sophisticated about the use of data because you know, just being able to personalize and one-to-one -one deliver these days anymore, that's not enough. The bar has, the bar has raised significantly yeah. and will continue to go up. Gabriel, yeah, we okay. talked with Robert, uh, uh, the GM of Autonomy this morning, and you know, we were talking about the same thing, and that's a good point. You might not know the shoes, so there's a lot of historical perspective. Yep. So there you got to get into crunching the numbers, you got to have the reporting, you got to yeah. be able to show the insights. And, yeah. and I want to ask you a specific question. Um, he made a comment, which you want to give him credit on, is that, and, and this is to Chris's point, in, you know, in the older models in the 90s, people knew about business data. Yeah. You know, we had business data, we know, you know record structure, structured data, name, address, serial number, all that good stuff. But now you got machine data, yeah. and you got human data, human right? Data. Adding new elements to the equation. So this is your wheelhouse, this is your, your company's, your department's division, yep. uh, your division's vision, so tell us about that. So how does that affect it? the machine data and also the human data, and add to, add to Chris's comment about yeah. the business aspect? Well, I think one of the key, uh, one of the key things in reality is there are way too much data out there. So uh, machine data, you need to extract from all sorts of different you know, uh, elements or, uh, or, or probes and so forth. So, and, Human data is the one which is way more uh, difficult to interpret. Um, I believe our perspective here is that if you look at the combination of the assets that we have in the company, both from the autonomy side from a human perspective and Vertica from a machine data perspective, combining the two as in, in a heavy architecture brings, uh, brings tons of value. Um, let me add something to what Chris said. You know, building uh, that personalized offer is, uh, is a key aspect. Let me go a little bit further. How do you actually find a context where somebody is actually looking for something in this specific moment? So the real time aspect is sometimes what's missing. Uh, it's not just about delivering the insight, it's already very valuable, but then how do you deliver an action in a fraction of a second after that insight? How do you position a product across all different channels, web, mobile, social, uh, eventually contact center, um, you know, email campaign. Okay, so let's take it to another direction. So Chris said no excuses for a business not to be instrumenting uh, all aspects of their value chain and value activities, because you can now. So we got the technology, so let's just make a premise right now that with Haven and with Autonomy and Vertica, I, I can attest to this and, and following you guys, you could do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can ingest the data on any source, machine, business, human, 
whatever that is, if they're throwing off data, uh, we can, they can collect it and you guys can report on it. So mm -hmm. let's, let's just assume, let's put that on the table as a fact. So if you believe that that can happen, let's talk about what's next. What, mm -hmm. what does the customer need to understand? Because remember, you guys, and like we have the CrowdSpots CrowdChat app, and what you guys have, you know, we're, at the, we're at the, I believe, the early stages of this. So, so there are early adopters, which you mm -hmm. guys are working with, and I want to talk about what they're doing with you guys, and how can you translate what they're doing to you guys to the rest of the, the market that follows those leaders over the chasm. What should people be aware of? What should they be doing? What are some of the experiences you guys share? We'll start with Chris. Uh, if you can just share your experience with early adopters, and what should the folks who are looking to cross the chasm mm -hmm. look to do, steps, advice, et cetera? Well, it's interesting because you talked about early adopters, but I actually think we are crossing the chasm now with big data, and just for those who don't know the terminology, you know, we're, we're kind of getting past the early adopter point, and what customers want to know more than anything is who's being successful with this. You know, as you get into more of a mainstream market, and this is when the market really explodes, I mean, the two biggest announcements we made at HP Vertica at this event were both about customers. We announced Vertica 7 back on November 19th, and we certainly talked about Vertica 7. We're talking about our marketplace, so we're talking about our technology, but it was the announcement of the Conservation International Earth Insights Project that Vertica was very much at the core of. And then also, obviously, as we, ju as we just announced in George Kadifa's keynote, you know, uh, the fact that Facebook is now using Vertica. So it's really about customers, and what are customers doing to be successful? I mean, if you listen to Meg Whitman's keynotes, this is what she talks about, being customer focused, making customers successful, because customers beget other customers, and customers want to see best practices. They want to see who, obviously they don't want it to be their direct competitor, but they want to see who's succeeding out there and be able to learn from them. So you need to get above and beyond just technology and just big data and really show success stories. So I so think that's you, probably one of the biggest things. Okay, so you think that the uh, digital marketing folks are beyond early adopters at this point? I do, yeah, okay. I do. So what stage would you give them now and what are some of the things that is the next step and highlight uh, to instrument a business end to end, what should people be thinking about from a digital marketing standpoint? Well, do you want me to? I, yeah. I, think, I think it's becoming a mainstream market. I think it's becoming a mainstream market as we speak. I think, you know. Marketo in public, right? Yeah, you've got the marketing automation market, you know, has done tremendously well. I know Autonomy partners with a lot of the marketing automation leadership. I mean, you see the creative things. You know, you watch 60 Minutes a week ago, what's everybody talking about, right? Amazon raising the bar again and delivering drones and you know whenever you believe that drones are going to blacken the skies over San Francisco, yeah. nonetheless, there's a lot of <laughs> don't cool drink stuff and drone. As you I talk said about on Facebook. Talk about personalized <laughs> delivery, right? So you have your own drone delivering a package to your door. That's those shoes I was going to get you for Christmas, John. They're coming via drone. So I can't wait. But you know, again, I, I think that just being able to market personally and ind independently, yeah, people kind of get that now. They might not be able to fully do it, but they realize now, if I can't fully do it, I'm, I'm going to be hurting, and I want to see what the leaders are doing. I yeah. really want to see. Yeah. That's why I like the Facebook announcement. It's was certainly so exciting It's for certainly us. exciting, and it's a competitive advantage, so Gabriel, why don't you go a little bit further on the digital marketing front, because that's your yeah. wheelhouse. Um, what is the digital marketing playbook right now relative to this, this crossing the chasm, you know, half of them, all of them are crossed over. It's still an emerging, massively scalable market because, you know, we, you know, Facebook is a great example. Yeah. They are the new modern era yeah. company, yeah. Mm -hmm. and more people want to do things like that. So, what's your no? What's your it's take? emerging. I think the uh, the status though is that digital marketing, at, at, as Chris said, I agree. Uh, I think it crossed the chasm. I think the point now it's it doesn't stop there. It's a learning process. Uh, you need to uh, start consolidating more and more information and learning by your customers, learning about uh, how you actually optimize their interaction. Um, what we see coming from some of the uh, you know, recent announcements, Bowden, Energy, Helpline, and so forth, is that customers are starting to, uh, to create a return on marketing, return on investment, uh, uh, you know, from the three, four, five percent to the 18, uh, 19, 20 percent. And, these changes a lot, they're thinking about how to invest in digital marketing technologies. Um, we also see a very interesting dynamic happening. The roles that the many companies are hiring right now, uh, which are basically data scientists, or chief digital officers, marketing scientists, which are people which are very uh, you know, uh, specific in understanding, in finding that understanding from the data they have. This, just didn't happen before. So that tells us that people okay. investing in uh, so I'm reading. Resource, I'm yeah. reading the HP Autonomy website here. It says, the future of digital marketing is here. Nice graphics. Oh, it's a good job to see the graphics up there. Visualizations, we haven't gotten that yet. Um, and then the tagline, turn big data into insight and action. Yeah. So the question for both of you, start with Gabriel's. What is the coolest thing you've seen 
from a customer implementation of turning big data into insight and action. The coolest, knock you off your chair, wow. Um, what I can say, the coolest one is some of the work, for example, we're doing with NASCAR. Real time, they understand the sentiments of people at races, they understand which kind of drivers are, uh, you know, the people want to talk about, and they immediately change your presence on the website to attract and appeal uh, to their users. It's amazing how they don't just uh, gather information about brand, but they take an immediate action to engage them and to potentially upsell them on different services. So if one car sideswipes another car and pushes them off the track, they know that fan basically can be pretty pissed off. Right, show them a little bit different copy. So, so basically change the copy of yeah. the content yeah, on the fly. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, you know, they understand that uh, there's just been an accident, you know, recently, unfortunately, that happened, and how to actually start directing people to the right place in the track. It's um, some, some, something that people haven't even uh, thought about it before. Chris, how about you? I know you got it probably, you know. Well, we, we've seen a bunch, you know, and I, I'm actually even doing a panel tomorrow morning where we've got a bunch of our customers talking about what, how they're doing customer analytics and customer analytics and big data, how that comes together. And we've got Game Show Network, which is owned by Sony. We've got a customer out of the Netherlands called Spill Games. We've got somebody from Capgemini in the panel. So we got a lot of cool customer stories. You know, I still revert back even though it was almost a year ago because it's so unusual too. I, I mean, if you remember the story of the Obama campaign, you know, basically, I mean, it's, uh, that's sort of a, a lot of wins, right, on a, on a macro, micro level. Um, and just some of the stuff that they did around the, uh, you know, the volunteers walking around house to house with iPhones and iPads, basically telling me when I go up and knock on Mr. Furrier's door and ask for his vote, what issues to talk about, what not to talk about, and how to micro-target, you know. And, and again, this sort of factors into the kinds of things that we're talking about now. It's really getting very, very targeted with our messages, getting very, very, it was part of today's keynote. You know, where should we be where should we be putting our message out? What should we be saying? Who should we be saying it to? And doing that all on a very, very individualized basis. And also, how do we respond? So, I mean, you know, we're seeing these stories every day. Some of the newest ones, of course, we can't quite talk about yet, but we, we're, well, we're seeing Facebook them all over the place. Well, certainly for you guys was a fantastic, right. fantastic reference for the folks. Facebook was unveiled. For the folks coming on from the California West Coast and the US we're coming on board right now on the Cube. So, so the numbers increase. Um, uh, Vertica, uh, George Kadif of HP Software announced Vertica's uh, marquee client that came up on stage, unveiled, was Facebook. Huge win, um, and it's not a small implementation. It's massive, massive implementation, um, and it just goes to show that the world's changing. That, coming to that scale, moving to Vertica, so congratulations. Um, so my final question I want to ask you guys both, and uh, we'll start with Chris. What is the biggest thing you think is going to change going forward in digital marketing, big data digital marketing, or data-driven marketing? In the next year or so that's around the corner, you see just we're coming right up as and people are crossing the chasm, setting up shop, doing some things, testing things, and you know, kicking the tires, rolling out projects. Uh, what, do you, what do you expect to see for well, changes and big things? You know, I, I mean, I tend to think change is evolutionary, not revolutionary. I think we're going to see a continuation of a lot of, a lot of what we have seen already. I think you know, kind of a very personalized message delivery. And I mean, we all know about everything going on with mobile devices and these days and how the form factors are changing of how people get information and shop for products and services and such. But I think, you know, what you're going to really see is you're going to see the leaders not just adopt, and this is very consistent with HP's pillars, you know, the pillars of what we, what we call, and you heard Meg talk about the new style of IT. You know, we talk about mobile and social and big data but I think the mobile factor in particular is going to be a huge, huge one where you're going to see a lot more, a lot more cool stuff happening you know, on a personalized level, but really just delivered in my pocket. That's, that's so machine, to speak. So that's, that's a combination of machine and human data right, right there, just the mobile edge. Well, and it's really, it's big data, but it's also very, very real time, because it hits me right then, right now, in my pocket, you know, and yeah. that's really what best in class marketers are going to be, going to be focused on. I mean, the, some of them already are, yeah. and expect to see a lot more of that. Gabriel, yeah, what do you think? For me, it would be the, the move or transition from batch to real, to real time. Um, we just came out of US after Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, you need to capture the attention and convert customers on a fraction of a second. You cannot do that if your uh, data is two weeks old or if you're going to receive your data by your campaign in three months. It just doesn't mm -hmm. happen. So we will see progressively companies starting to act in real time and uh, that will basically help them uh, you know, to basically capture conversions based on uh, data-driven um, aspects. 
Awesome stuff, guys. We really appreciate it coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it, uh, Chris, Gabriel, appreciate it. Uh, just give you the guys the final word. Um, the show here, describe to the folks here who didn't make it to the show what the vibe's like, and put a bumper sticker on the car that's leaving, leaving Barcelona as it drives away. What summarized HP Discover 2013 here in Barcelona, put the bumper sticker on the car. Um, Chris, we'll start with you because uh, your on the end was moved down. Well, I mean, I love it here. It's a beautiful place. I, I was going to say, you know, something that basically says I'll be back or I can't wait to get back here, right? I still have some Christmas shopping to do before I leave town. So, but, uh, you know, not quite leaving yet, but I actually have two sessions to do tomorrow, as a matter of fact, but can't wait to get back here. So, see you next year. Something like that would work well for me. Yeah, same for me. I'm, you know, I'm Italian, so we are particular about food, but I have to tell you this is the, you know, best city, uh, best food in, uh, in the world. So, I think it's uh, combining the uh, fantastic show with a great, you know, atmosphere. It's uh, one of the best things. It's a great city, certainly it's beautiful. I'm, I want to get your tips on the restaurants uh, for tonight and tomorrow while we're staying visit. Guys, appreciate it. Big data, digital marketing. It is a data-driven world. Instrument your business, great stuff. Haven, Vertica, Autonomy. You guys are doing great work, congratulations. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back streaming our open source data video uh, right after this short break. <laughs>